You're listening to an interview taken from the Tonic Talk Show and Podcast, heard exclusively on Zoomer Radio. To download or listen to the original episode or other episodes of The Tonic, please visit thetonic.ca. My first guest, Peter Jostling, is director of the Sussex, England-based Garlic Centre. He's a trained chemist graduating from Nottingham University in England. He's had over 18 years' experience in the international health food industry, devoting his time to conducting and publishing clinical studies on a wide variety of natural products, including garlic, hypericum, ginkgo biloba, plant cellulose, vitamin C, and stabilized allicin. He's written several books and peer-reviewed, edited, written, and published many scientific articles on the action of plant-based extracts on human health. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Thank you very much indeed. When you came on the show last month, we learned all about your research into garlic and the extract allicin. Today, we're going to learn what ailments allicin can treat. For those who didn't hear the show last month briefly, what is allicin? Yeah, sure. Well, allicin is a compound that comes when garlic is either cut, crushed, cooked, boiled, chopped, or stir-fried. Or if you're Spanish, you believe that you hit your garlic with a knife and that creates a lovely flavor for the meal that you're going to cook. Right. So that's that's like a physical reaction. And basically what happens is you unite two compounds that you find in, let's say, a garlic clove. So in the center of a garlic clove, you have an enzyme called alanase. And that enzyme is surrounded in every single cell around the central core of a clove of garlic by a sulfur compound called alleine. So these two are, if you like, garlic's natural defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. So if you're growing garlic in the ground and it gets attacked by a fungus or a virus or a bacteria in the soil, then these two superheroes, if you like, break out of their cells and come together. And the first thing they release is a compound called allicin. Now, everybody agrees with the basic chemistry of garlic. They know that as soon as you cut or crush or cook your garlic, you release these two compounds, and the first thing you produce is allicin. Now, up until relatively recently, that allicin has been very, very unstable, very difficult to capture, and before you even know it, it's already changing into something like 200 different sulfur-based thiosulfonate compounds. Wow. So very difficult to capture this stuff. But what, what we were able to do is I led a team of chemical engineers, chemists and biochemists like myself, and we were able to, for the first time ever, to be able to stabilize this allicin material. We used a little bit of clever chemistry. Uh, we used controlled temperature and pressure in the reaction, and we actually tricked the fresh garlic that we use in the process into reacting for a much longer period of time so that we could dilute the allicin with water. And that meant that it had the opposite effect in that it diluted the allicin, but it made it more stable. Mm -hmm. And the really cool thing was that making it more stable, we were very lucky. It still had incredible biological activity. In other words, even at a relatively low concentration, this now stabilized allicin from fresh garlic could kill funguses, viruses, bacteria. It could get rid of intestinal parasites, and it can do all sorts of really cool, neat things to the human body. And because we made a stabilized liquid, if you like, we could then move on and make that or convert that into a powder using normal health food industry techniques. And that would then mean that we could go on and do some clinical research to show that the allicin was stable and that it had some really amazing properties as this stable compound in terms of the way it killed uh, microbes, so funguses, viruses and bacteria. Fantastic. Well, let's focus one by one on these various microbes. Let's start with bacteria. So Alice can help with bacterial skin infections, right? Absolutely right. Now, if you look at a lot of ailments that people suffer from, the background reason for that is infection. Yes. And where does the infection come from? It usually comes from a bacteria, a fungus, or a virus. Right. So bacterial infections are very, very common. If you go into the, the backyard this afternoon and you cut yourself on a rose bush yep. and you bleed and your finger swells a little bit, that's a bacterial infection. That bacteria is almost always bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus. 
let's say you go out to one of the finest steak restaurants in Toronto this evening. Yes. And you, you get a piece of meat that hasn't really been cleaned or cooked properly. You might potentially pick up, let's say, an E. coli infection, another uh, gram positive bacteria that has the ability to cause you sickness and ill health. You can vomit. You can have diarrhea. It can make you feel really, really grossy. Yep. These types of bacteria are all completely and annihilated by this allicin material. And we've done an enormous amount of testing, both in the laboratory and in human subjects and in animal subjects, to show that this allicin can kill things like E. coli, Salmonella, Clostridium, and in particular, Staphylococcus aureus and uh, what's known as MRSA, or I think you in Canada call it MRSA. Yes. So let's say uh, you had a topical infection, like you were mentioning gardening, which is something I happen to do. So if I got a skin infection, would I take the allicin topically or would I ingest it and it would work? You can do both. I mean, the nice thing about uh, Canada is that you actually have Alimax, which is the oral treatment. Right. But you do also have a gel, which you can use topically on the skin. Now, not every country in the world has this, but it's, for my way of thinking, it's one of the best things we've ever invented. Right. It's a topical treatment that is allicin, stabilized allicin, in aloe vera. Now, you'll know about the benefits of aloe vera, I'm sure, better than most people. So you know that it takes compounds deep into the skin it penetrates into the skin layers very very easily so what that means is that let's say you've got a cut on on the back of your hand if you put some of this gel formulation on the aloe vera takes the allicin deep in through the skin layers and starts to heal the wound very very quickly but more importantly what it does is it prevents that wound from becoming infected Now, you know, in the garden, there's all sorts of things where you can pick up infection. You can pick it up from the soil, from the plants. You can pick it up from other people. You can pick it up from animals. So, you you, you know, you you can easily pick up an infection. And that's when the skin starts to fail to heal properly. So what you should do is belt and braces, we say here in the UK, (laughs) take the topical treatment, but also take the oral treatment. Why? Because we know from our early research work is that even if you have a, a patient, and we had one very famous patient actually in Canada, it was a young girl who had brittle bones and she had some pins put in her spine to heal her spine. Right. And unfortunately, she had two tiny wounds that just wouldn't heal. Now, in those days, we didn't have a topical formulation. So she just took, uh, I think it was 10 capsules of the stabilized allicin every day for six weeks. And within that six-week period, we actually swabbed the wound site. We swabbed under her arms and, and in other areas on her body. And we proved that she did have a bacterial infection in that wound site. She took the the Alimax, basically, the capsules, and within six weeks, both little wounds had healed over completely. Wow. And that was from an oral treatment, which, you know, is quite impressive, really. It really is. Okay, so we've discussed bacteria. Let's move on. You mentioned fungus and virus. Where do you want to go next, fungus or virus? (laughs) <laughs> well, virus, I think we, we touched on, uh, you know, a few weeks ago when we discussed the common cold. Right. But don't forget, there are so many different viruses out there. Right. And whilst we don't necessarily develop into a full-blown cold, we might get the sniffles, we might feel run down, we might start to feel rather tired. And the really cool thing about the stabilized allicin is that it can kill viruses. Uh, we've proven that in controlled double-blind studies. But we also know that it can prevent what's known as a reinfection. And that's really important because viruses are so different that your body, your own immune system can fight one off and you go back to work or you go back to what you were doing, you know, four or five days earlier and you catch another virus. This is very common. So the really cool thing about the research is that it shows that the allicin not only gets rid of a viral infection, but prevents a secondary attack. 
So it actually protects your immune system. And we know how it does that. It increases the number of white cells that your immune system releases. These are the CD4 T cells, the killer cells that are needed to basically fight off infection. So viruses are no problem. And it can be anything from, believe it or not, Epstein-Barr virus, which wow. is very difficult to treat. Yeah. Right the way through to the simple ones like herpes viruses and rhinoviruses and even some of the, the really nasty ones. So viruses, again, are no problem. They're, obviously, they're much, much smaller than bacteria. So the allicin works in a different way to disrupt the activity of the virus in terms of when it starts to interfere with your own cells, DNA and RNA. So we know that it's a really good antibacterial and antiviral. I might as well cover funguses as well. well but, but before you do, though, I have a question yeah. for you. So, so I find that most of the colds that I get sort of morph into a sinus event after, right? And that's because it may start off as a virus, but then it becomes bacterial. Have you yeah. done any research on that sort of switch when a cold digs right into your sinuses? Can Alamax well, help with that? Yeah, we have actually. We've done, again, a controlled little trial right. that shows that when you, when you develop a fungal or a bacterial infection in the nasal passages, obviously what happens is you block up the sinus right. uh, passages. And that's very, very common, particularly if you have a cold as well. So what you can do is, this is quite cool, you can take this gel formulation that is available in Canada and you just take a little pea-sized piece of gel mm -hmm. and you put it up inside each nostril and you squeeze the nostril shut to push the gel further up the nasal cavity, which is exactly where the bacteria and funguses right. keep replicating and where they live, basically. So if you do that, we've shown that you can get rid of bacterial and fungal carriage. Very easy, very safe, no side effects, simple to use. Feels a bit peculiar when you put a bit yeah. of gel up your nostril, right. but... It works really, really well. And again, at the same time, back that up with an oral treatment to make sure that you're helping that immune system to get rid of these pernicious microbes that you don't need. I'm going to add one piece of advice. If you're putting it up your nostrils, don't do it while you're driving. Do it in the privacy of your own <laughs> home, right? Absolutely. You're right. not advocating doing it while we're driving. I'm sorry. I, I interjected. <laughs> Let's go into funguses because I, I stopped you from going there. That's fine. I mean, you know, fungus, you know, it's said that 85% of women in North America suffer from a fungal infection at some stage during their lives. Yes. That's an awful lot of ladies and that's an awful lot of fungal infections. And what, are, what our early testing showed was in the laboratory that the fungal species were the ones that were most easily killed by the stabilized allicin. Wonderful. And to give you some idea how easily they're killed, each capsule that you can take on a daily basis will give your body around about 200 parts per million allicin. And we know that the fungal species like Candida albicans, which is the common one, will be killed by just 1.5 parts per million allicin. So they're very, very, very sensitive to it. So what I would recommend is that ladies take vitamin C because that's really good as well. And you add that to the stabilized allicin and you have an ideal combination for battling against candida overgrowth. And you know that that's the white tongue, the swelling, the bloating after eating, and sometimes a discharge as well. And that's very, very common for women to suffer from. They can go to the drugstore and buy a drug every month, costs about $40. You know, it's one capsule and it works for a few weeks, but then the fungal infection comes back. Right. With allicin, that just doesn't seem to happen, provided you keep taking what we call a maintenance dose, which is just one tiny capsule per day. So it's quite remarkable what it can do against these microbial pests, if you like. Right. Okay. We only have time for one more question, but I understand, and this is really important for Canada where that we have vast outdoors. I understand that Allison is actually effective against Lyme disease. Is that true? It is correct. Yes. I mean, as you quite rightly say, the incidence of Lyme is climbing dramatically in Canada, in the USA, but also right the way across Europe. And that's because we're getting a little bit more intelligent about diagnosing it. There are more doctors who are interested in diagnosing Lyme disease. Right. And we've just finished a trial that shows 
that if you give quite a large dose of Alamax to Lyme patients, plus one or two other things in the protocol, then you will get rid of Lyme disease. You'll go from what's known as IgG positive for Lyme right the way through to IgG negative for Lyme in about eight weeks. So it's a remarkable result. We hope it's going to be published in full in the next few months. Fantastic. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. Thank you so much for coming on the show.